Hi, I'm Daniel with Plumpy Thimble, and today we're taking a look at In the Star Wars by Tate Wu. Today we're taking a look at In the Stars, a roll and draw constellation game from Tate Wu. Now, full disclosure, I was paid to create a how to play video. However, I won't let that influence my actual opinion of the game, but you should know that up front. Since I did do an entire how to play video, I would invite you to either go check out that video first, or I will put some important tidbits right here. You use a print and play sheet, a pen or pencil, and Tabletopia to facilitate the cards, tokens, and dice. Over the course of 13 turns, you will attempt to complete three constellation designs. You do this by using actions on dice to connect stars and galaxies. You can also earn extra points by discovering wormholes and attracting alien viewers along the way. The printable player board is built out of a grid of galaxies. Each galaxy is contained within a large square, bordered by large galaxy stars. Within each galaxy are smaller stars. Each star is depicted by triangles, pentagons, or circles, indicating its type. Each card has a pictorial reference to show you the requirement. Once those criteria are met, you may, for an additional point, draw an outline around your constellation of an animal represented in the stars. Once a constellation is completed, you begin work on the next one until either all three are completed or 13 turns have finished. Choose one of the blue dice and roll it with all five of the orange dice. You should note, whichever blue die you choose to roll on a turn cannot be used on the following turn, so planning out your moves is essential. Once you roll all selected dice, choose three to create a series of actions for your turn. Each dice face you select will give you a potential action to perform, the invite action uses the UFO icons on the dice. This action attracts alien visitors to come and observe your progress and earn you points. For each UFO icon you use on a turn, draw that many visitor tokens from the bag. The wormhole icon can be used to take the discover action once per turn. When you take the discover action, check the leftmost open circle on the active constellation. Note that some of these have already been checked for you. The game ends after 13 turns. So after playing this game a few times, my initial reaction is that it was pretty cool. It had this sort of artistic versus analytic feel to it. You certainly were trying to maximize your point potential, uh, but the game itself is very aesthetically pleasing, and there's a lot of satisfaction in creating your constellations and drawing, and I don't know, it, it, had, it had a nice mix of analytics with creativity. Now, one of the more interesting choices in the game, I thought, was the fact that you were essentially penalized for not being creative. Uh, when you complete a constellation, you get an additional point for it if you draw an outline around that constellation representing the animal or creature that was represented on the card. This forces your hand to create something that could essentially be pretty ugly. And myself, I'm not that artistic of a person, so all of my drawings were arguably objectively pretty bad um, but in order to get that extra point I had to actually participate in a creative endeavor which on the one hand I really appreciated because it, it forced your hand to get involved into the creative process uh, while at the same time I could see how it would be um, frustrating to be point-wise forced into a position to do something that you may not particularly enjoy. Now I want to take a look at some cons and pros before I give my final verdict or my final opinion on this game. Uh, one con in particular was the fact that you're left up to the mercy of two different types of randomness in this game. Obviously there is the dice, which are very common in this type of game. Um, and you have that Yahtzee mechanic where you can re-roll dice a certain amount of time and choose uh, which dice you want from a multiple multitude of them, uh, which certainly mitigates the amount of randomness that you get from that faucet, um, but it's still there. In addition is the drawing of the aliens. Uh, these visitors are a big source of points for you in the game, and you're drawing randomly from the bag. You can mitigate that again, but that mitigation comes from that source of the original source of randomness, the dice. And so, while all the actions are fun and compelling and interesting, uh, there is the fact that you are dealing with multiple avenues of chance. And that's... Um, I was ultimately fine with it, but it is something to be aware of. In addition, this game experience is rather nebulous, and while there's an analytical aspect of it, there's certainly um, avenues that you can take that, that can maximize your point potential. Uh, 
with that randomness comes that nebulous, squishy experience in that you, it is, it is equal parts logic puzzle, but also equal parts creative process. And with that creative process aspect of it comes the fact that you're gunning for as high a score as you can get, but some of the mechanics get in the way of potentially maybe maximizing it. And again, I think that is by design rather than a flaw. This isn't the type of game that you min-max to death in order to get as high a score as possible. It's a game that you sit down and you enjoy by yourself. I also wasn't a massive fan of the idea that most of the components are digital. You use Tabletopia as opposed to physical components and you use a piece of paper that you print off. The fact that this Kickstarter is gonna come in at like a buck does play into the fact that it's a pretty darn good value. But if you are not keen on using Tabletopia, if you're not keen on using mixed types of components, then maybe this isn't exactly the type of game for you. Now, I will say I am fairly confident that there's going to be a physical version of this game in the, in the future at some point. Um, for what it's worth, especially for the price, and if you're comfortable with those digital components, it is a fantastic little game, which leads me right into my pros. It's a unique type of roll and write. Now, we've seen many where you're creating paths, you're creating avenues, um, you're creating you know, different station lines all across the board. Uh, the fact that in this one you're connecting constellations, and not even that this is the only constellation game out there, but you're, you're creating constellations that are at the same time constricted by placement and movement rules, um, but open in so many other ways, is a pretty cool endeavor. And the fact that you are forced or penalized by points if you don't do this, but actually drawing out the shape of, let's say your constellation is a cat, you know, has to represent a cat. It plays into the fact it goes, I, I could create a line of stars that looks nothing like a cat, but knowing that that aspect of the game is there compels me to do something that may, ah, boy, it's interesting. It's, a, it's that combination of logic puzzle and spatial puzzle with creativity, because in my mind, I want to make sure that my, my lines look as much like a cat as possible. But that may not always be the most convenient, most most accurate path to take in order to score points. And it, but but I want to make sure that it looks like a cat. And so you have this tussle, this this back and forth between creativity and uh, point potential. And oftentimes those two line up really well. But it doesn't always. And so the puzzle is is an equal mix of finding the avenues that will create the best point potential, but also creating the most aesthetically pleasing pathways possible. And that's cool, that is unique, that's something that is really, really interesting. And due to that, it creates a delightful playing experience, something that I um, really enjoyed the multiple times that I ended up playing this. Now, the $1 price point is also a huge boon here, especially if you're interested in testing this out, just to kind of see how it plays. It's worth throwing a dollar at it and having gone from almost never touching Tabletopia myself to creating the tutorial how to play video and playing it multiple times, it's not difficult. So in conclusion, this is an implementation of a game that I would love to see a physical version of. Using those digital components are a little bit wonky, but not difficult, especially at that $1 price point. But maybe someday, and hopefully we will see a full-blown like physical multiplayer copy of this game. Um, but that's, I mean, that's probably in the future. You can't go wrong for $1, and if you're at all familiar with Tate Wu's other charming designs, this fits right in line with those. Tate's game designs tend to be equal parts uh, brain-burning, cute, and interesting. And this fits the bill for all three of those. And if you are interested in this at all, or you would like to see maybe my full How to Play video, go check that out. And I will include the link on where to fund this uh, in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. You can find me on just about any social media at Plumpy Thimble, but in particular, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, and especially here on YouTube.